Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm chatting again with Jim Tassoni. We're going to be talking some of his trading strategies for markets, precious metals, even following up on that recent call he made last month on the bond market that uh, so far has really played off well for him. Jim is the CEO of Armor Wealth Strategies. He's an active trader and investor. So what we're talking about here is some more, I guess, short-term strategies, but we can also tie it in with longer-term outlooks. And I more want to start here, Jim, with bigger picture outlooks where, look, these markets are strong. There's a wide range of sectors that are strong. The ones that we are talking about off mic, simply the broad averages. Even though they're choppy, we do seem to keep on seeing all-time highs in a fairly consistent nature. Precious metals, those have gone through breakouts. The stocks have also done fairly well. My question is, though, with these moves higher, consistent moves higher, and not saying that we're anywhere near a top for any of these, I don't know. I think trying to call tops and even bottoms is a damn near impossible game. But from what you look at, chart-wise, market-wise, what do tops look like? How do they form in your eyes? Yeah, and I appreciate that, Corey, and thanks again for having me on. It's always fun. From that standpoint, I couldn't agree with you more about the difficulty in calling tops and or bottoms for that matter. I think I've seen a lot of careers get damaged and or ended by someone consistently trying to say we're at a top, you need to get out, you need to short, whatever have you. And so from my standpoint and the way I trade, I tend to let price action be my guide. I let momentum take me out. And so we were talking about from a shorter swing trading standpoint. I mean, even from a swing trading standpoint, I've been long this market since right after that pullback in early August. And when I say this market, I'm talking about the spiders, the SPY, the S&P 500. And I've ridden this all the way up from, you know, let's say roughly... 519 ish up to where we are now. Now, as I said before, if you want to look for an area that may be forming a top, at least in the short term, this 585 to 585 and a quarter area has been tested multiple times over the last couple of weeks. And we failed up there continuously. And now, obviously, with the trade today and the market pulling back, we're pulling back a little harder and a little further away from that 585 level. With us trading about here, and I mentioned this to you off mic, Corey, I'm looking right now at 569 and a quarter as my line in the stand, in the sand. I've been long this. It's been a great trade. I've taken some profits along the way, but I'm still holding a substantial long position. But if we got to close below 569 and a quarter, that's where I would be looking to exit not necessarily get short or get short, excuse me, but just stay flat, look for what the market's going to do next. And that's sort of the way I trade all of my positions. I let momentum be my guide. I want to be long when momentum's in my favor, and I want to be flat and or short when momentum reverses and starts to head the other direction. Hey, I, I love following momentum. I think that simply momentum trade is the way to do it a lot of the time because it can take you to oversold or overbought levels and stay there. Now, with this, I guess, loss of momentum in the S&P, we've almost seen that consistently at the tail end of the last couple months. So again, a lot of that has resolved to the upside, but the momentum doesn't seem as strong. So How long could a topping process take in your eyes? Well, I mean, there's nothing that says that we couldn't have a significant period of consolidation here. The market doesn't always have to just continue to blast to the upside and or sell off significantly either. There is definitely room, and, and most of the time, to be completely honest, the markets are in more of a consolidation phase. And like I mentioned, in a short term, from a short term standpoint, when I say short term, I'm talking about, you know, a swing trade lasting anywhere from a week to a couple of months. I've got a really significant range starting to form here between about 585 and 569, as I mentioned before. So, 
there's no reason why I couldn't see us bouncing between that level over the near term, especially with all the uncertainty and all the unknowns coming up. Jobs report, federal open market committee meetings, a little thing called the presidential election that we'll be having here in the U.S. next week. So all of these sort of uncertainties or unknowns could lead to a period of chop and consolidation until the markets figure out exactly where they want to go with the information they're provided over the next couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. And that's what can make those things so difficult, too, right? Because, yes, all this uncertainty can cause more fear, can cause sell-offs. But once it's behind us, if, let's say, the data, if the results go more in the favor of, I guess, what markets want, they can also be catalysts, too, though. 100%. And that's why I said trying to guess off of a political decision or a Fed decision or anything like that, and we've talked about this before, I found over my career to be extremely difficult. I'd prefer to let price be my guide. And right now, I'm long for much lower. We trade below 569. I'll get out and be flat. As long as we're above 569, I'll hold this long. So, Jim, I'm curious if you watch rotation of money into other sectors. Uh, Historically, there are sectors that are referred to as more of the defensive sectors. We see money move into these areas when investors are worried. Sometimes when we do see that loss of momentum in the broad averages, do you follow this aspect of markets in that bigger picture strategy of are investors getting simply more scared? Yeah, I mean, as far as rotations go, I do pay attention to them. But again, it's more in the context of Where is the momentum going? I'm not going to try to say that if investors get scared, I want to own utilities and consumer staples just because I think that's where investors go when they get scared. Conversely, if the market's making all-time highs and has a lot of momentum behind it, I want to be in discretionary and tech and things like that. I would rather let price action be my guide If the strongest sectors happen to be utilities and consumer staples, there's probably a reason for that, but I'll let the breakouts and the price be my guide on that. All right. Well, Jim, you've shared with us your thoughts on kind of the markets where you're watching the S&P. What about precious metals? Because look, last since last time we chatted, precious metals have continued to move higher. Gold was pretty much at 2,800. It's pulling back today to end the month. Silver was up over that 2250 resistance level, still is, but is also pulling back today to about 3273. The stocks, look, they have been doing pretty well. The precious metal stocks almost across the board, a little bit of weakness in the last couple of days, but how are you viewing the precious metals in these recent breakouts? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we talked about it last time and it It ended up looking like a decent trade for a little while, and then we're kind of having a pullback here. But first, we'll start with uh, the overall gold futures market, the the commodity. And we continued to, as we said, we were bullish on that market. Um, We went long, again, back in mid-August on our shorter-term strategies, down around the 2550 level. We've been long the whole time since. Now we're sort of getting into this area. Again, we talk about areas where we let the market take us out. And that's sort of a theme with our trading. We don't try to guess. We don't try to predict. We let the market tell us what to do. And here we are sitting now. We see some support forming in the 2744 area. We dipped briefly below that in today's trade. But we've reclaimed that level, and that's actually a really bullish sign for us. So we think as long as we can maintain closes above 27.44 here on the precious metal future, excuse me, the gold future, we'd continue to be long. Now, what about the stocks, too? Are you seeing opportunities in the stocks? Are there any area of the stocks that you're liking? I know you mostly follow the ETF, so any moves that you're noting? Yeah, so as far as the the GDX goes, if we switch over to the ETFs, we mentioned last time we talked that we'd like to get long on a close above 40 spot 7, 
we did get above that. We were able to take profits on a quarter of our piece up higher. Unfortunately, we still do own three quarters of the position here. We're going to allow ourselves to be stopped out on a close below 4033. And right now we're trading just slightly below that. We'll see how the rest of the day goes. But in the GDX, if we do get a close below 40.33, we'd exit that position. We'd probably make a small profit between the quarter piece we took off and the tra- and getting out of the trade. Maybe a small loss, but we're willing to take those small losses in order for better setups. We saw the market shoot higher, but it sort of failed to, to sustain that momentum. And so that makes it sort of a warning sign for us of a trade that we may want to at least step to the sideline for the moment and, and reassess. So even looking at the GDX daily chart, it's pulled back right now to the 50-day moving average. We've seen really over the last five months a nice higher high, higher low pattern what would worry you on the downside if this was more than just a natural correction and still that momentum higher trade? Yeah, so in order for me to really get bearish, and what I mean by that is to look for a short position, I'd need to see sustained trades here, you know, in this area under $40. If we can't hold $40 and we got a few days of momentum where we couldn't hold 40 and we were trending lower, that might be an opportunity in the short term, at least, to set up for a short trade if you're sort of a more aggressive trader. For me, with the momentum we've seen in the markets with the longer term daily and weekly charts, I would not short this market. There's people who are more aggressive than me that like to do that. But below this 40, 30, and then definitely below $40 on the GDX, I would be on the sidelines waiting and watching for momentum to reestablish itself. Okay. Again, still very much in an uptrend. Just needs to put in another higher low, which it's done over the last five months. Let's move over to the bond market then. As I mentioned on the onset, you made a call when the Fed started with their first rate cut that you were shorting TLT, actually thought that rates could move higher. That has happened. Look at September, mid-September, TLT has gone almost straight down. Where do you stand now with your TLT position and outlook on bonds? Yeah, and thanks, Corey, for allowing me a minute to pat myself on the back here. Um, This was actually probably our best trade slash call of the year in in our strategies. We made that call the day that the Fed made their initial rate cut. We said for a plethora of reasons that we actually thought that this was not going to bring bring rates lower. It was going to re-steepen the yield curve and the longer end of the curve could actually see rates go substantially higher and that would be bad for TLT. So we put a short on at that time We're out of about three quarters of it. We put it on at a little over 100, about 100 spot four. We're out of three quarters of it. We've been trailing our stop down. We've got to stop now at 95 spot seven. So we've got a good profit already locked into this trade. But we think there could be some more downside on the TLT and therefore upside on rates. And our target rate when we started this trade, where we thought the 10-year could trade to, was we thought it could get to 465. And we still think that 465 is a possibility, maybe not a probability, but a definite possibility for this for the 10-year. Do you have a long-term outlook on the bond market or simply where interest rates are going? We went through a 40-year bull market for bonds, which just pushed rates lower and lower. Could we have seen a pretty massive change here and be in a generational bear market for bonds? Yeah, I mean, that's a difficult call to make. But I do think that there's a potential that we may have seen the end of that bond market that so many of us grew up in, as you mentioned, for the past 40 years I think we're in a situation where I I hate to use the term new normal because it's so overused, but I think the idea of 
zero interest rates, those type of things. I think those days are past. I mean, if you look at the history of the 10 year, and I studied this, not just over the past 40 years, but over a, a hundred plus years of history and data that we have dating back all the way to 1919, the average 10 year treasury, and we've had some really high ones that can skew this, but we've also had some really low ones. And I, this was actually higher than I would have expected, Corey, was 5.8%. That's the average. We've become so spoiled by these lower rates that we almost think of it as inconceivable that we could have a five, five and a half, six percent, 10 year for a prolonged period. And that's sort of my base case thought and or scenario. I think, like I said, I think the 10 years, quote unquote, fair value interest rate right now is somewhere in that four, six, four, seven range. I don't necessarily see that rates being significantly lower. I'm also not in the camp camp that we're going to see nine, ten percent, ten year interest rates. But I think somewhere right in that four and a half to five percent range is probably fair value for the ten year and roughly where I would think it would trade over the foreseeable future. That's a very level headed answer, Jim. Everybody, you know, wants to say that we're in new generational markets, but hey, we very well could be in a time where we finally just have more consistent rates. We can plan more around those. I know some market participants might not like that. They probably want lower rates, but fact of the matter is it does seem like uh, I'm with you that everything is kind of lining up for a bit more stable rate environment. Jim Tassoni, great chatting with you. Again, CEO of Armor Wealth Strategies. Click that link in the show notes to visit his website. Jim, Great chatting with you. We'll chat again in another few weeks. Sounds great. Thanks, Corey.